All right. So we're talking about engagement while I'm getting my stuff set up. I'd love to see if there's anybody that has a golden nugget that they want to share. Is there anything that you've already figured out that works exceptionally well when it comes to engaging people and think of it from three different perspectives, right? So engagement happens to get people to show up. Engagement happens to get people immersed in a live experience like this, or even in a recorded experience, like how do you keep people engaged and moving along in the experience? And then the biggest engagement is how do you keep somebody in action and in forward momentum after they leave you? So first things first, when you think engagement, I feel like we ultimately think, how do I make my meeting more exciting, which we want to, but engagement for us is all engagement is about how do we keep people in motion all the way through to completion. So there's things you have to do up front. There's things to do in the moment. And then there's things to do after. So if anybody has any golden nuggets that they're looking to share about that, um, I'm going to give you the floor and let you tell us anything that has already um, come up for you. Or you can drop it in the chat too. So one of the things that we are testing out right now that seems to be working very well is um, creating a Teams environment for any programs that we're running. Um, and through that Teams environment, what we're doing is um, it's a platform for people to engage almost like a social media, um, but to engage back and forth throughout, well, first off, before the program even starts, right? Um, then throughout the program and even after the program. And it's also an area where we can share files, share articles, um, send out um, activities, you know, you know, intercession activities, or um, even for our new hire um, orientation, we have now a new employee ambassador program. And so there's different announcements that are done through the organization that we're posting in that team site for that for those new employee ambassadors to say like, hey, here's a nugget of information to engage with your with your new employee. Um, so those are different um, areas of uh, engagement that we are now introducing into a lot of our programming uh, at SJI. So solid. And again, like you're really capturing the essence of engagement. It's not mm -hmm. just in the class engagement, which is important, mm -hmm. um, but it's how do you get people showing up with the information they already need in order to make this live time really important? Mm -hmm. And then how do we keep them engaged after it's over to keep it going? Um, and having a community container is an, an amazing way to do that. So you guys are using Teams, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, no brainer. Um, in the entrepreneurial space, it's not uncommon to use Facebook, tends yep. to be really popular. Um, LinkedIn even has groups, you know, mm -hmm. that, um, th that work really well. The, the thing, the only recommendation we make, it doesn't matter the platform, what the barrier to, to successful use of a platform is daily automatic action to that platform. So let me just explain what that means. The reason in the entrepreneurial world, Facebook works so well is that people are already in Facebook. Anytime you require someone to learn how to log into something new, it's not a part of their day. They don't go there multiple times in a day. You have to do a lot of work to make that muscle memory that makes that a constant place that they go. So um, because Teams is you know, really prevalent in your company, they're in Teams all the time. And you, know, and, and you can, um, a couple, I'll give you a couple of other like goodies on top of that, anything where you can tag people. Um, because tagging is like uh, nudging. And if you don't know what I mean by tagging, it's literally like the at symbol and the person's name. And what that does is notifies them off the platform that there's something on the platform for them. It's like a little whisper in their ear. One of the things that we hear people say why they won't do that is they'll say, but oh, it feels like I'm bothering them. It feels like I'm bothering them. I don't want to be annoying. They have so many things to do. Um, do you ever feel that way? Does anybody ever like feel like, oh, is this like, is this bothering somebody if I do this? Yes. <laughs> Kirsten, yes. Um, and, and the truth is, could it be? Sure. 
you know, but the, but, but ultimately this is why, you know, and Kirsten, we're thinking of this from two different perspectives. So when you're out marketing and selling, it can feel very bothersome when you're like constantly going back to someone else. But remember somebody that's already on the inside of your program, whether they signed up for something free or whether they they've made the investment, right? They're in the program for a reason. And the thing I love to say is that people always put themselves last on the list. So training will always be the first thing that gets cut in a busy day. And that's just a natural human thing, right? Training is something that's for you, right? To, to make you better in some way, your job better in some way, your skills better in some way. So when there are conflicting and competing priorities, we'll often put ourselves last. And sometimes it's that very little nudge that was like, oh yes, I, I needed to do that. Thank you so much. Like I choose to believe that, and, and this again is why we wrote the four steps. If what you've created is so powerful that it can get a result or change someone's life, right? Depending on what you've written, then it's in their best interest to be there. And they most likely want to be there. And those little tags and those are little reminders help them. So um, I love it. Does anyone use any other platforms? I have another one that we can toss out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll also use Yammer. Um, which is a Microsoft uh, Office 365 tool. Okay. Um, and that is very much like a company um, social media platform. Okay. Um, so we'll use that as well where um, we have an employee shout out uh, um, social media kind of page, but on that employee shout out page, we'll put different things from our, from our programs and highlight um, some of the key takeaways from the program to gain exposure um, to other people that maybe didn't participate that we are trying to get them now engaged and interested in participating in the future. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's so powerful. Nothing sells better than proof. Write mm -hmm. that down. Nothing sells better than proof. It's one of the reasons that we want to help you craft a, tra a training program that doesn't just give people information, but actually creates some sort of value exchange or some sort of achievement of a goal that's important to another person, because that is what they will talk about, right? Um, in, on the entrepreneurial side, the better your testimonials are, the easier it is to sell your program. Um, and I actually believe that to really be true on the corporate side as well, it works the same way. You know, if you have, again, 17 different things you could be doing in your work day, but you've seen, heard four different people say how valuable this experience is, you're far more likely to go check it out than if you didn't know anything about it from anybody else. So yeah, spot on. I love that spotlighting. Um, I was just in a, um, with a marketing group this week and, uh, you know, in, in my, in my business life and we have group me. So I don't know if you've seen any of these platforms, these tend to be like little text box, like little text groups, um, which are really powerful too. And actually in some ways a little bit simpler. So I find the Microsoft, like the Facebooks, the teams, um, they are work to manage. Like you do have to cultivate conversation in those groups. They are work to manage. Sometimes um, a text chain, um, the one that's very popular right now is one called GroupMe. Um, you know, there's also one called Community. You know, there's a bunch of different ones, um, but putting people together in just a text chain and where you can do voice memos, where you can do quick pictures. So we all committed to referring each other and someone was smart enough to bring a whiteboard and wrote down everybody's name and the referrals that they wanted. And all we did was take a picture of that, put it in our, our group me text chain. And now we all have like in our hands in the moment, the exact thing that we need to do. So think about that from a, after my participants have learned the thing that I needed to teach them, we need to get them into action and keep them in action 
little blurbs like that um, are perfect. So little recaps, little reminders, little videos, little success stories um, that are meant to be quick, easy, consumable are great, great ways to um, bring a group together and really keep things um, engaged. Um, Diane, in your in the accelerator program, did we build in anything where they meet? Are is there a Teams channel for them, or did we? Because you there, have the capability. There will be. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. There yeah. will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll yeah. have we'll have that um, as a part of the program. We also, like I said, we had the Teams channel as a part of our um, NEA program that Jen runs, and then we have one currently up and running right now too for our PUR um, program that just launched. So, um, and again, it helps us create that engagement even prior to the program starting. Mm-hmm. So that way, when we come in to day one, people already are familiar with each other, and we're getting more engagement in the actual live workshop as well. Um, which, you know, that first workshop is always, it's always hard to get people to engage in that first one. Um, and then like during the workshops themselves, there's a ton of engagement that we put in there as well. Um, Jen, if you wanted to talk about some of that, even like just with, um, onboarding. Yeah, we really have been trying to, you know, just engage our participants, especially throughout like our onboarding day with using like the GIFs chats, um, making it not so much us just talking to our new employees, but having them tell us, you know, what their favorite snack is, um, tell us something that's not on your resume that, you know, or tell us something we wouldn't know by reading your resume. And it really starts to cultivate that conversation and helps us to get to know them even better. But then after is when we have our NEAs pick up with things and then they come into the fold. So there's a lot of communication that happens within those first couple days of just getting to know each other more so than just throwing information at them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, it's exceptionally good. People want and crave human connection. They show up for human connection. Um, they want to know each, you know, we want to know each other. We want to have interesting conversations um, and you don't need to let it take over everything, but having that planned time breaks the ice, makes things, you know, helps to, I think it also helps to just facilitate sometimes outside relationships. Many Mm -hmm. times I've gotten off of one of these calls and like message someone and be like, oh, you and I both went to blah, 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 blah. Um, In this meeting we were at the other day, uh, this was so funny, but um, you know, you, you kind of bring people to this networking event and someone had actually brought another person And in the midst of like an icebreaker, they found out they went to the same high school, (laughs) like, you know, so like you find out like these interesting things that just, you know, kind of build these connections a little bit more, um, which always contributes to, uh, to that. What else is jumping out for everybody? These are such really good, rich, rich, uh, rich ideas. Uh, and you're, you're taking all the, uh, you're taking all the, uh, me having to say this, that, and the next thing out of the, out of the list. So thank you so much. What else, who else, um, Kathy, Kirsten, um, and feel free to just put it in the chat. Even what is your community piece going to be? What is your container going to be? I just got off a call with, um, one, like a new potential member of my group. And I just made up <laughs> to her, said, we're going to get together on, in the beginning and I'll agree on what platform we're most comfortable on. Because, you know, if people aren't on Facebook, I'm not going to make them come over. So I, we're just going to do, because it's a small enough group, we'll just do it by consensus, <laughs> either Facebook or text or WhatsApp or something. And you know, like how powerful is that? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves, we do not need to have the answers. You know, we, we do not need to have the answers and it doesn't always have to matter to us. What is going to be the thing that keeps our participant, like what is going to make it easiest for them? And when it's easiest for them, right, the less hoops, the less barriers, the less obstacles you put in the way, 
the more likely they are to actually get into the good stuff. I, I, I applaud that. I think that's genius. You know, you don't have to make everything up. You can in the moment um, decide what's there. One of the things that we do, um, one of the things that's, that's really popular in the entrepreneur world is to have a database with like hundreds of trainings in it right? It's like a badge of honor that the more trainings you have, the better your program is. And, and actually it couldn't be any further from the truth. The more trainings you have, the more confusion and overwhelm and a confused mind. This is a sales tip. A confused mind always says, no, if I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do, exactly what this is for, and there's an ounce of confusion, I will simply say no. So it's the number one thing we hear about like LinkedIn learning. So LinkedIn learning, hands down, like we don't even need to create content for the most part anymore. Like it's there and it's there by, by people that if we were inviting them to our organizations would cost us $20,000 for an hour and a half. And it's literally at our fingertips. It's so good. But if you ask the average employee, the average person, they pull up that database and they're like, I don't, I don't, I, first of all, I don't even know what, and then that that's too long. Like they spend 30 minutes messing around, trying to find something that they think is good for them. And they ultimately like throw up their hands and, and they're done with it. So um, how simple can you make things for people is an amazing way to engage. Yeah. So a really good um, example of just trying to simplify that for people just with LinkedIn in general is just creating um, like a five four to five um, uh, uh, on-demand video, like learning path. Yes. So that way we can say like, okay, hey, we have this learning path on DEI and this, these are the courses that we recommend. So that way they don't have to even search for that stuff. They already yep. see what- Take it all out of their hands. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Such a mm -hmm. good, and I love, I want everyone to just sort of jot down this idea of learning path. So mm -hmm. that is often something most people don't think about, but what is the journey? What is the path? Um, and sometimes it's not the first thing you build, but it'll be the second thing that you build. So when you're first, like Kathy's just getting started brand new with her program, she needs to get, you know, the three to five buckets of information that she's heard most in her research that people need and start teaching that. And then from there, you can actually see the progression that people went through in order to achieve that goal. And for all, and, and that becomes your learning path. That's how we got to the four steps for the signature, you know, for the accelerator program. We said, if we boil this down to the most basic process, it's one, two, three, four. And if you do these things in this order, in the way we tell you to do them, you will actually have a program that you can get started with. Then we'll go back and add in, you know, the things, but I didn't have that learning path first. That was like, became clear after running it a bunch of times and seeing where people um, needed redirection, needed guidance, things that didn't make sense. Um, like I said, I was just saying this earlier to Diane, we just revamped the program after a year. Um, and I, spent money to have like it professionally done and, you know, everything else. Um, and I pulled out probably a good 50 to 60% of the original content that I started with. And because of that, one of the things that we always advise in the program is all you really need is a handful of the most commonly asked for videos. If you have any videos at all, and then we make the policy that whatever you tell us you need, we'll build it for you. So you need a template, you need a resource, you need a how-to, what do you need? And we'll build it for you, but I'm not going to build it unless it's actually something somebody tells me that they need. So um, you don't need, right? I want to dispel this myth. In order to have a successful program, you don't need hundreds of videos. As a matter of fact, when we work with established program owners and they ask us to help them elevate their impact. The first thing we do is pull probably 50% of those videos out and put them as clarity resources that we send out when people need them. Otherwise just too, 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 too overwhelming. Such good, good conversation for my signature training program. We don't have a Facebook group. 
we don't have a group in that way at all. Our container that we went with was, was, the, was more of a project tracking board um, and the use of live workshop sessions. So we have a regularly scheduled live session where you can come meet with other people in the program, connect with each other, you know, get additional learning, get your specific questions answered. Um, but we made people available to answer your specific question anytime you needed it through monday.com. So again, no right or wrong way. What one of the reasons I like to have these sessions this way is just so you can hear everything everybody's doing and pick the one that works for you and for your people. Kirsten, in, in our world, Facebook has become a real hot topic. People are anti Facebook these days. <laughs> So they're not going to come to your, right, to, to, to your group there. So um, did you, did you say what they landed on or did you, um, you're going to oh, no, do that so when we you haven't, meet? we haven't kicked off yet. So I was just going to have that be a, one of the points we discussed at the very beginning. Um, since I probably only have about four people, it'll be easy Perfect. to manage, but then we'll see. The other really popular one, and I just started using it recently is Voxer. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with an app called Voxer. Um, that's very popular in the coaching world. Um, it's like, it's awesome. <laughs> Not going to lie. I'm in love. I don't know if you've what, ever used what's it. What's so time. awesome about it? So it, first of all, I'm a voice memo. I'm not a typer and I don't like to read words. I like to listen. So, um, like I'm going to pull this up for you right now. So first of all, I like everything in one place. I can't go searching through my emails to find stuff. I have to, I like everything in just one place. And for me, if I can't access it on my phone, I'm not likely to use it as much. So those are always, um, but, and I'll just show you so you can put people together in a group. Um, but this is, I don't know how well you can see this. This is, this is Boxer, but this is someone that I'm working with and you can see like, it's a walkie talkie feature. So you literally hold the walkie talkie button down and speak. <laughs> you can't make it any easier, but you can upload documents, take screenshots, you know, this is, so everything is here. It's just, it's just super, it, it's just easy. You know, it's just easy. Um, you can do pictures, uh, you can attach documents. And again, like when you just click the little, oh, I don't want to do that. Cause now it's sending Julie a message. Sorry, Julie. Um, so I love that. That's really popular for coaches, really popular for, um, people that might need, uh, uh you know, a little bit more ability to talk. Um, and the other one that a friend of mine is using a lot lately is a new one called Marco Polo. And that is the same thing as Voxer, but it's a camera. So you can do video conversations back and forth. She's after me to get on that, but I don't always like the face. So I prefer sometimes just, just the voice. All right. So we're coming up kind of the end of this 15 minutes. Is there any other tip or tool anyone wanted to share? We've had so many good ones. Thank you so much. I want to just put, if you have anything else, put it in the chat for us. Um, I want to walk you through uh, just the, 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 we've done all the teaching, which is great. And now I'm just going to put the fine point on everything. I always come back to this. This is something I try and bring up almost every session. It is the four steps. Um, we call this, you know, we, we build results-based training programs because we know they drive performance. And I, I've now officially trademarked it, by the way, it's in trademark, um, the disruptive spark formula. Yay. Um, and you've heard me talk about this before, but it is built off of three pillars that people need expansion, right? We need to blow up their minds. We need to disrupt their thinking. We need to change what they know to be true because when you do that, they're ready then for um, you know, they're ready then for the information and that clarity, that information should come from advisors and experts, whether it's on your team or whether again, through LinkedIn learning, whatever it is. Um, but ultimately what makes something super successful and what people miss the most is the human connection side of things. So it is, you know, and then this is how those are the pillars. And then these are the four steps. And today we've really been talking about this step here of engagement. So how do we limit block or stop um, things that will derail people and keep them engaged? 
And I don't even really have to go through. Uh, I'm just going to give you the four levels of it. And everything we talked about matches up pretty fairly to, to each one of these levels. The first one is, I don't want to. <laughs> there's a great little meme on, um, you know, uh, there's this little girl with the, with the, well, I would, I really would. <laughs> she's saying, she's like, but I don't want to. If they don't want to, it does not matter what you're doing, right? You can get a body in, but you cannot make them do something. So how do we get people to want to is your first level of engagement. And then the reason they don't stay engaged generally is there's just too many distractions. Like there's just, remember we talked earlier about, you know, there's only so much stimuli we can even take in. But then there's our days, our work days, you know, our, our personal commitments, you know, there's only so much time in a day and remember it is human nature to put ourselves last. So ultimately the thing that is best for us tends to be the thing that's last on our list. So move forward with the intention that your people want to be there and that, especially if you've done, you know, this work here then they actually want to be there. So how can we help them put themselves at the center of the circle and get them there? That's the tagging, the reminders, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, meaningful content, Diane's comments were so good about this, right? Before, during, and after, right? How relevant is this information to them? Um, how much can we give them, drip it out over time so that they can remember, so that they come to the table ready to discuss, um, you know, so that they they have what they need in order to be successful as they're going out to implement. And then at this highest level, it's really just the human connection. So for our program, this is one thing I'm going to recommend that each one of you decide how to best, um, you know, how to best share this information, but what, at what point does you or someone on your team actually reach out one-to-one -one and check in? So we try and make it a goal for us to, especially with, you know, the, the longer term clients, usually on a Tuesday, I stay away from Mondays because Mondays are very busy for people. Um, they, you know, they're very busy. They don't really want to like, they're, they're definitely not thinking about themselves on a Monday, Tuesday, maybe a little bit better Monday. They're definitely not thinking about themselves. Tuesdays though, is my day when I like to leave a quick voice memo so like you'll notice on your monday.com boards, it's usually on a Tuesday that I'm either doing a little reminder from last week, a little check-in from this week, a little something that I want to share, you know, any one of those things. Um, I almost, I'm very good at that on Tuesdays. The, the, I try and do an end of the week check-in too. That doesn't always happen. My end of the week seems to fall apart on me. <laughs> um, but I, but Tuesdays is like a setup for the week. And then like, for me, the, the Friday is like the, um, you know, follow up, how did it go? And then the other thing that we've built in monday.com is that's another reason we use this tracking is that. So each of the four steps, when you we've automated it on our back end. So when you click your dial from like not started to in progress, we get a notification. So it's a reminder to us to send a quick note and be like, Hey, I see you just got started. Good luck. Let me know if you need help with anything. It's the right. That little bit of human connection. Um, we also ask people to choose their date for when they believe they're going to have their first pilot ready to go. And, um, we track to that date. So we keep note of like, we send ourselves notifications as you're getting closer at intervals towards that date so that we can like be that little voice in your ear. Hey, how's it going? Are you working on it? Do you need anything? Um, they're not likely to ask, but if you open the door, they are more likely to, to, yeah, I, this is what I get all the time. Yeah. You know what? As a matter of fact, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Um, they had been thinking about it, but they just didn't, you know, they're busy, you know, they're busy. So think about those little human connection, like just those little, I'm thinking about you, I'm with you, I'm rooting for you. Um, and those little personal connections can make a big, big difference. Anything else anybody wants to add on to that um, or 
uh, at this point. Anything else you want to add on to that? Nope. All right. Do me one favor in the chat, either to me or to everybody. What is the one takeaway item for you that will make that you're committing to adding in as engagement moving forward? Diane, I'm just seeing this Slack. Yeah, Slack is a really good one too. Simplifying. It's the best gift you could give anyone. <laughs> it's literally the best gift you could get. And, and everywhere. Like I do it with my content. I'll sketch, sketch, sketch out my content. And then I'll literally go back and I'll say, what can I take out? What can I take out? Remember, we can only absorb so much. Having more intentional thought provoking asks of learners. Love that. More communication with groups to keep engagement going. Love it. Yep. And again, remember, it doesn't have to be huge. Little, little things make the big difference more than we think. So that's the end of this part of it. I'm actually going to stop the recording. I will make this available. If